Today I'm going to talk about blood flow and the concepts of how water moves from one area to the other. Here we're looking at a lovely vein on my hand. If I push the venous blood away, you can see it's slowly filling up. If I let go, pop, it's back. Why does it keep filling up? You'd say, well, that's because my heart's beating. And that's correct. My heart beating will push new blood into the system, which will go through the arteries and the arterioles, and finally the capillaries, and then the veins, which is what we're looking at here. But what makes the venous blood go back to the heart? Because there's almost no pressure in veins. And the answer is fluids move from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. So when I do this and squash my veins, if I can do it, I'm exceeding the pressure of my veins and I've collapsed the vein at the other end. But the pressure is building up behind my hand and when I let go, that forces blood through that vein again. What makes water come out of this faucet? If I lift this handle, voila! By magic it seems water comes through that faucet. And if you're taking a shower and you turn in that faucet, you would expect water to land on your head. But what's making it come out of the faucet? It's a concept of hydrostatic pressure. The pipes in your house are under a lot of pressure. And that pressure is built up not by anything in your house, but perhaps from the water in the city being held in a big tank above the ground and they release that water slowly and with gravity that puts pressure on that water and the water travels from that tank all the way to your house right into your pipes and if you lift that faucet the pressure inside your pipes is higher than the air pressure at the end of that nozzle and water comes out. So again, water goes from high pressure to low pressure areas. Blood goes from high pressure areas to low pressure areas and lymph fluid goes from high pressure to low pressure areas. And this is the concept of hydrostatic pressure. The kidneys work with a process called filtration. In filtration, high blood pressure, or regular blood pressure, creates high pressure in the arteries that are going to the kidney. When that high artery pressure reaches the arteriole, and then finally to the capillaries in the kidney, then that high pressure kidney blood will squirt out plasma into your empty Bowman's capsule of the kidney. So bringing high pressure blood to the kidney, when that blood reaches the capillaries, we have to remember that capillaries have holes in them, tiny holes, so that that blood, when it reaches there, will reach that high pressure area and have nowhere to go except in those teeny tiny little capillaries and those capillaries have holes in them and the water part of the blood separates and starts flowing into the kidneys. Much like your shower does. Because the pressure in my tubes of my house and the water pipes is higher than the air pressure that's in my shower stall. When I open the valve, the water comes out of the shower head. In the same way, when we take high pressure blood and take it into the kidneys, once that high pressure blood reaches the capillaries that have holes in them, just like my shower head, the plasma leaves the blood and goes into the kidney tubules where it will then be cleaned and filtered and waste products and nutrients exchanged. Why do feet swell at the end of the day? When you get up in the morning, the pressure in your vessels is equal because it's been through the whole body. But once you stand up, then the venous pressure at the lower extremities gets greater and greater. Sometimes the venous pressure in your 
Lower extremities can reach 90 millimeters of pressure. And that's a lot for those little tiny capillaries to handle. So plasma, very slowly, will leak through the pores inside of those capillaries and enter your tissues. So at the end of the day, your feet may even be as much as a half size bigger because they've swollen during the day because of that excessive pressure in the veins, making excessive pressure in the capillaries, and the capillaries leaking plasma and going into your feet. To help prevent swelling in the feet at the end of a long day, some people choose to wear a compression stocking. In this case, this particular sock pushes 20 millimeters of pressure at the upper part of the sock by the knee and 30 millimeters of pressure towards the ankle. So when blood comes into the foot area and attempts to get back to the heart, as it goes up the leg, the pressure down towards the ankle is greater than the pressure up by the knee. And so that assists blood back to the heart. So every time you contract your muscles or move the lower extremity, that sock will help force the blood back towards the heart because it's causing to have a greater pressure down at the foot and ankle than at the upper end by the knee. So in review, we know that hydrostatic pressure behind the fluid causes the fluid to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. This is why blood flows through our body and this is the principle of how lymph flow is moved through the body and returned to the heart. Filtration is a way of moving water that is filled with things, things dissolved in it, through a barrier and it uses the concept of hydrostatic pressure. In filtration, solutions go through a barrier, the liquids pass through the barrier, but the larger particles remain behind. This is similar to our capillaries. When high pressure blood gets to the capillary, capillaries have holes in them, and the water part of the blood can pass through the capillary and enter the tissues. In the kidney, blood enters the capillaries in the kidney, and the plasma leaves the blood and goes into the, cap, into the kidney itself, leaving any large particles like proteins or cells like red blood cells and white cells, they stay in the blood and continue to go on past the kidneys. So if we're pretending we're a kidney and we're bringing blood to the kidney, the blood will come to the capillaries and the water, the plasma, will leave the blood and go into the kidney. But the solid particles remain in the bloodstream and a little bit of the plasma remains. And that goes through your body until it comes back around again, where again the water will go to your kidneys and the plasma part of the water will go into the kidneys and leaving the larger particles behind. The reason that the water goes into my bowl here is because I'm using gravity as a pressure. 